almost perfect 500 grams. And why are you using 500 grams? Um, so normally mugs are between 4 to 500. You get a little bit wasted when you're throwing on the wheel anyway. But I like a nice big mug, I like tea. So uh, Good size mugs, so, fits all. Exactly. So yeah, and also the, this particular clay shrinks about 15% from, uh, from this the stage when you're throwing with it to uh, the point where it's kind of finely fired. So. And is there anything special about this particular type of white clay? Um, it's a very smooth clay. It's Keith Brimer Jones uh, stoneware. Oh, it's famous from Throwdown, of course. Yeah, yeah, made with Keith's tears. Apparently, this one. Um, he sheds enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a very smooth clay. Uh, it's fairly controllable on the wheel. Um, being a white clay body as well, uh, there's very little in it in terms of colourants that'll affect the glaze at the end. At the end, so uh, yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm just putting the pad of clay down uh, just to get started. Um, so I tend to use, I tend to throw on bats, which are these little round wooden things. Um, partly the, the main reason really uh, is when you're removing the pots off the wheel. Sometimes they can deform, um, so yeah, whereas if you kind of throw them on a bat, you remove the bat and obviously uh, the pot's still intact on there, so uh, it doesn't, doesn't uh, no chance of the pot deforming. Uh, this particular wheel head doesn't have any lugs on it, so uh, the way uh, the bat's attached is by throwing a flat, flat pad, of, a pad of clay down, um, and the, the bat sticks to that and obviously that sticks to the wheel head and it just holds the back in place while you're uh, while you throw it. So firstly uh, just start by centering. That's done basically by sort of applying pressure. I put the hand my hand round uh, behind the clay like this, interlock my hands like this and then kind of push in and down at the same time, that forces the clay into like this puck shape that you see on the wheel. Um, if you're throwing sort of up from there, then usually you would cone. I'll just quickly do a cone to show you. Normally for a pad of clay I don't do this, but uh, so literally it's just pushing the clay in and up into that kind of formation. And what that does, you can probably see it, it looks a bit like a unicorn on a horn, uh, so it's got a spiral going through it. It essentially twists the clay, so the clay has a direction of travel kind of in it, like a, like a grain. Uh, so then when you're throwing, it's, it's just a lot easier. It also gets potentially any air bubbles out of the clay as well when you're kind of throwing. Um, so yeah, our next bit is I'll sort of push it back down. I don't normally do it like this, but just so you can see it. Then you push it down, and then normally you reform that, that puck shape that you saw a minute ago. And from that puck shape, that's kind of a starting shape for most forms on the wheel, that puck. Um, yeah, and essentially you kind of push push down into the center from there, uh, open it out, and then uh, that's your starting shape for most things on the wheel. So for a mug from there, you'd kind of pull up sides. From For a bowl, you'd pull it, kind of flare them out a little bit and then pull it up, depending on what kind of shape uh, bowl or uh, mug you kind of want to do. So right, so I'm I'm just flattening a pad of clay for, for the back. Right, so I've flattened it down quite a bit. I'm now just going to push into the centre, almost down to the base of the wheel head. And I'm just going to open it out, pull that, uh, or just spread the pad of clay out really across the wheel.
Okay. We're nearly done with this. Oh, just caught that. Okay, and that just gives you a good base to, to stick the bat to. Next thing I do is run my fingers through. I create kind of a bit like a Union Jack pattern actually on the uh, had a clay I've just put down. Like so. Okay, uh, then just grab a bat. And are they just a piece of ordinary plywood? Or? Yeah, literally, you can use ply or MDF for these. Um, different potters favour different things. Um, a lot of potters favour MDF just because uh, as eventually these will break down because they're subjected to a lot of contact with water, obviously, so they're bonded, sort of reformed wood. So MDF doesn't have a grain to it, so you can get splints from MDF. However, I find plywood a bit more durable, so um, you just have to watch your hands around the edge of it, but uh, yeah. If you're throwing something like a plate uh, or anything kind of very flat, um, throwing on a bat is absolutely essential. Um, you're absolutely guaranteed to warp uh, the plate when you remove it off the wheel if uh, if you're not throwing on a bat. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of critical that you use a bat uh, for those types of things on the wheel. Um, anything very flat and quite spread out. Okay, so right, when you pick the clay up, you've got to be really careful not to touch with your wet hands, touch the bottom of the, 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 the bottom bit of the clay, because you need it to be sort of sticky. So then when you throw it onto the, the, the bat or onto the wheel head, then it sticks basically. Um, what I always do is a double measure, which I chucked a bit of water on, and I just push down with my hand as the wheel's going around, just to, to make sure it's kind of smushed on properly and that it's not going to come away when I start to centre. Okay. It's a slightly bigger bit of clay than what I use for the pad. So the pad, I think I use about 250 grams uh, of clay for the pad. The pad only needs to be maybe I don't know, a third of a centimetre in, in, uh, in thickness. So uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be especially thick. Play up. And then back down again. When you're combing down, uh, it's, it's a little bit counterintuitive. You're essentially pushing the cone over, so it's bending the cone forward, and in doing that, it compresses it and compresses it back down into a spiral shape again as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just. Uh, it compresses it back down in a kind of smooth way. Uh, back to back to centre again. That's pretty centred now, to be honest. But uh, I will just do one more, one more cone. See, so, yeah, no wobble. So. Central, so I'm going to just push it back down into that uh, back into that puck shape that you saw earlier on. Applying quite a bit of pressure as I push down just to keep the clay on centre. Nice smooth kind of, uh, I'd say, I call it a puck because it looks like an ice hockey puck. It's the only fucking thing to describe it. Uh, uh, well, so okay, so first bit, once you've got the clay completely centre, okay, centred in the middle of the, the wheel, it's not got any undulation, so it's not moving or wobbling. If I kind of look down, yeah, it's dead smooth. Um, first bit is to basically locate the, the centre, the centre of the, the puck. Gradually, I push my thumb in. In the middle, depress the press the clay in the centre, and make a bit like an inkwell in the uh, in the 
the centre of the clay. I want to add a bit of water just for lubrication because as you push down it will it will push the water into the clay. And you kind of like comes of experience, but I think you can kind of look down once the water's kind of out of the way. And you compare the bottom of where I've pushed the clay in to the the bat or the wheelhead and you kind of do a visual comparison and I can look at that and say right that's about between half a centimetre to a centimetre kind of thick uh, at the moment um, and that's the point I think right that's gone down far enough now you don't want to go down too far uh, like if you wire off for example and you've gone down too far chances are you're probably just going to put a hole through the, the bottom of your uh, your bottom of your work which is really annoying if you've spent ages kind of throwing something um, okay, so the next piece is kind of opening out. So what I'm going to do there is put my thumbs kind of trying to do that either side on the inside and Gradually pull the piece out. So it's to open this open out this this uh, inside piece here Supporting the outside of the pot while I do it as well with my fingers and You can bring the pot out slightly further uh, than what you actually want to come because you can basically pour it back in. And the reason I do that is the pot has a tendency to have, a, like, have like a curve on the inside. If you pull it out and then push it back in again, it turns it from a, a curved angle. Whereas you push the pot in, it, it tends to give it more of a square bottom like you'd see in the, in the bottom of a mug, for example. I'm just gonna smooth the bottom of the, of the piece a bit. In there. And how much pressure are you applying with your fingers? Hardly any, to be honest. So this, very light touch. This, yeah. So if the clay, it, it really depends on the clay. So this clay is relatively soft. If you've got quite a firm clay, then you need to put a bit more pressure on. Or if you've got a more groggy clay, again, you find it, it uh, push back a bit more against you. This clay is incredibly smooth, so uh, quite controllable. You have to apply very little pressure in order to kind of get it to do what you want it to do, really. Um, okay, so I'm just about ready now to start pulling. So pulling uh, is an expression uh, where you're taking this very thick clay here, and I've got a, a rim on the inside, so the, the clay on the inside is a bit, a bit like that. So what I'm going to do is get my fingers on the inside of the pot and the other hand on the outside and kind of pull, pull the clay up like that. So you're applying it slight pinching pressure and even sort of slight pinching pressure at the same time moving both hands up the pot so you're taking the thickness and turning it into height as you as you bring the um, as you bring your fingers up you need to make sure yeah if, if my pot's really reasonably lubricated at the moment but if, you, if it's a bit dry then yeah you need you need a good amount of water to do this the first pull you don't want to pull it up too much so you want it a nice even um, sort of it, even, uh, even level, and it's still quite thick and that's fine. Okay, I'm going to collar it back in a little bit, because as you, with the centrifugal force of the wheel, and as you kind of squeeze the clay, it wants to flare out all the time, so I tend to work with my pots slightly tapered in, and it's like a safety margin then, so as, uh, as you throw, you know, you've got that, that, that slight margin uh, where if it does flare it a little bit, it doesn't matter too much really. Um, yeah, so I know you can't see my fingers on the other side. I'm a right-hander, so I can't actually do it on the other side of the pot. But um, what my fingers are doing on this side is, is that. So I, I cross my fingers over and I use that pad of my finger at that level of the pot. On the inside of the pot, I've got my fingers like that. And I'm kind of... The, the clay travels through my fingers in like an S shape as I pull up. As I do my next pull, you'll probably see, hopefully, <laughs> you might see it like a ridge of clay moving up the pot. And that, that's the clay, the thickness of the clay kind of going up the sides. This needs a little more on the outside. Okay, I'll just collar it in, in fact, actually, before I do that. Collaring, well, the way I kind of describe collaring to a beginner pot up, is it's a bit like if you had your hands around somebody's throat, I suppose, like that. So you, you're kind of you're kind of doing that, and you're closing your hands in on the pot as you kind of move up. 
So you can turn the pots from that shape, colouring, into that shape. If you're making like a bottle, for example, you'd throw it up to a point as a cylinder, and it's the colouring that you use to, to, to bring the clay in. As you collar, it brings the clay in, but by doing that, it makes the clay thicker as you, as you colour in, then you've got more clay then potentially to pull up with. So the neck of a bottle, for example, as, you, as you're kind of throwing up to a point and you, you collar it in, gets quite thick, and then you use that thickness of clay to pull up the neck to, to kind of finish. So that's uh, how that works. Right, now I'll grab my sponge on a stick. Um, my kind of tools, I don't have too many throwing tools, I don't think you need loads to be honest. Um, so I've got uh, a turning tool, which I like this shape. It's just for finishing the pot at the end. You can put a, a small bevel on the bottom of the pot. This is actually one of my favorite <laughs> throwing tools and it's actually just a strip of um, wood that I cut out with a 45 degree angle on one side and a right angle on the other side. And it's square on this edge and rounded on this edge. Um, so on the rounded side, it's quite nice. If you're throwing a cylinder, you can put it against and do a, do a pull on the inside against it and you get a nice straight, it's like a ruler almost for clay. Um, this angle is great for, <coughs> for putting in putting bevels on the bottom of pots or ridges if you want to do that. And given that it's a right angle, when you put it down, you get a dead square kind of point on it. So um, you can get throwing ribs, I think, which do the same, but yeah, essentially it's just a piece of wood that I had kicking around in the garage and uh, I cut it up to use that. This is a similar kind of thing, it's just got a finer, finer point on it. Sponge on a stick. So this is really useful if you're throwing quite tall things, but if I tried to get my sponge in here now, it'd just be a bit awkward. I could put it on the end of my fingers and try and get it down, but it's probably going to foul the inside of the, the, the pot. So it's nice and thin, it fits nicely in. Also, you just squeeze the, there's just a little bit of water in the bottom there, so you can get, get that out. That's, that's gone now, that water. So um, occasionally I use a kidney, so tend to use a kidney if I'm throwing round shapes, so you can get that inside. The, this is a flexible aluminium kidney, so you can you can bend it uh, and you get you know you can alter the shape basically to, to get the shape you want. Um, the only other thing I, I use other than sponge, um, actually there's one other thing in here, I'll grab it out, uh, is the potter's pin. So basically if it all goes wrong on the rim and the rim starts to undulate, it's, it's a bit uneven. You can then run the pot round with a pin and it, you can incise the, the, the rim on the top and literally just remove it and it makes it smooth again. Uh, finally, other than the wire which you use again to, to cut the, uh, the pot off uh, the wheel potentially, is a chamois. Um, so you use this at the end and it basically finishes the, the rim of the pot. So you literally just run it around like that and it gives you a really nice smooth sort of rounded off edge. Uh, it's nice and soft because it's wet. And that's just an ordinary piece of chamois leather? Yeah, just normal leather. So it's not it's not a man-made chamois, it is an animal sort of hide chamois, but uh, literally there's no better thing really for finishing off the rim of a pot. So uh, yeah, that, that's my, my weapon of choice, I suppose, for just uh, for finishing. Uh, okay, so I've, we've done, a, I think, one and a half pulls at the moment. So you can see the pots Pot's quite thick at the bottom still, so there's a bit of clay. It's about that thick at the moment at the bottom, and it's slightly thinner at the top. So we're going to pull that the weight of that clay up. I'm just basically doing that same hand movement again. Try and go for a nice even pull. So the clay's kind of travelling. Between my between my two fingers, kind of like that, as I as I pull up, and you see the pot's a bit taller now, and you've got you've got the rim, you've got the throwing lines now from uh, from that. I'm gonna in a minute on the next pull, I'm gonna probably do one more, I think. I'm gonna pull, try and get some of this clay that's that's flared out here, pushing into the pot and getting it up onto the walls. Uh, that's that's the plan on the next pull. Okay, right. So hopefully. Hands aren't too dry, they seem okay. And again, this is just using the tips of your fingers yeah. and feeling the clay as it's flowing. Yeah, literally just travelling between my fingers as the wheel goes round. There you go, and that's what I was saying about the clay flaring. I didn't actually collar in between on that one, so yeah, if you don't collar, cut off and it'll 
start to funnel out like that at the top, which is fine. Um, so like I say, you can easily correct that just by doing that, that collaring. So yeah, essentially just doing that gradually, very slowly, just moving away at the pot. You have to do it quite gently. Uh, if you're too heavy handed when you're collaring, what you find is the clay can kind of start to, to pucker a bit. So you do it in a, in a multiple, to so do it gentle but a few times I would say, it's probably the way to go. Um, all right, I'm just going to have a feel inside just to see if it's, yeah, I could probably do actually one more pull on that thing. I like nice thin light, light mugs. It's probably, you know, a lot of people will think that's, that's fine. It needs finishing obviously, but. Um, so I, yeah, I like to try and get as much of the weight out of the base as I possibly can and get it up onto the, um, up into the height of the pot. As you get to the top of the pool as well, um, you slightly, very slightly ease off what you don't want to do is pull through the rim of the, the, the cut basically so um, I just e I just ease off slightly and just just go slightly less pressure but just take my time on the rim um, let's get some of this loose clay off the top let's do one more collar and then we can pick our shape that we want to change the, the mug to at the moment so I just get to a basic cylinder shape Clay is reasonably fit. So the clay is probably looking down on it, not half a centimetre. It's probably about four, three, four hundred mil in thickness at the moment through the, you know, through, through the wall of the pot. Maybe slightly thicker at the bottom, but uh, yeah, not not too, uh, not too bad. It's reasonably even. So a couple of, I, I, I'll give you a couple of tips actually. So if you're taking up throwing, uh, a couple of tips I give to people is when never touch the clay if, if it isn't moving on the wheel. So the clay must be rotating around, so never touch it when it's not going around, unless you're removing it obviously. Um, very easy on when you're touching it, and very easy off. So if you're heavy handed sort of touching it and then it will knock it off centre, guaranteed, and then you're, then you're trying to centre it, and that's essentially what, one of the things that can cause it to wobble. Um, when you're doing your pull, good thing for beginner throwers when you're doing a pull, start at the bottom and then count to 10, slowly count to 10 as you do your pull. You should, have, you should be at 10 or, or not quite at 10, I guess, when you get to the top. If you're at the top and you're not at 10, you're pulling up too fast, basically, so you need to take your time when you're, when you're pulling up. The other thing is just tons of practice basically so uh, that's that's the main sort of key thing. Practice makes perfect. Yes, especially with throwing. Um, I'm going to carve, take some of this off the base. Right, so just carving some of the excess clay off the base at the moment. Right, okay, so I won't bevel it just yet. I'll do that a bit in a, in a moment. Well, because I've scraped that surface, basically it's kind of quite dry now, so I'm just adding a tad more water on there. Pop. Okay, so we've got our cylinder. Okay, it's reasonably, I think it's reasonably straight. There's a little bit of a bulge in the middle, but, um, and at this point you decide, right, what is it I want to do with it, basically. So. Obviously, too small to be. It is a mug, essentially in shape, or, or a tumbler, or something like that. Um, so at this point, we go right. Okay, what is it? Um, what shape do you want to do? Um, if you go inwards with the mug, it will go slightly thicker. 
Uh, if you go out, bulge the mug out a bit, then it will go slightly thinner. And I've left a bit of extra weight in the thickness of the wall at the bottom because I quite like the idea of having a bit of a belly on this. He's a bit like me. He's uh, he's a middle-aged pot, and he's got a bit of a bit of a potter's belly on him. So, uh, so I don't always use this, but um, this is a this is a throwing stick. Um, so you can basically get. It's just easier than getting my hands down in there at the moment because it's a reasonably reasonably narrow cylinder. I've got I got snow shovel hands basically. So um, I'm gonna put that in at an angle. So I'm putting it in like that, and the clay will kind of push against push against the the throwing stick like like that. Just applying a bit of pressure gradually, you'll probably see from the outside the pot sort of getting a bit fatter before you, before your eyes. I like a pot with a bit of a belly on it, to be honest. Um, it's got a bit more character. Same same rule applies where as you're putting the tool on the pot on the inside, same thing with, as I said with your hands, easy on, easy off, particularly with something like this, where you've got less feeling. So obviously if you're using the tips of your fingers, you can feel how much pressure you're putting on it. Whereas obviously with a tool, you know, it's well, probably nine inches long this, you know, you're you're you, you know, you're kind of get you try, it's less easy to feel kind of what you're doing with it. So it needs a bit of water on this, I think it's getting a bit dry in there. down inside he's got a bit of a shoulder on him so I'm probably going to smooth this out a bit from the inside so I'm going to bring that out a bit just to smooth the shape oh put a little bit there on the inside Okay, so I'm just going to smooth the inside where I caught the tool on it a moment ago. Okay, and this is a bit where I get my chamois out. I lost him a pug bucket of water. I tend to use this is the first thing I've thrown on this wheel tonight. The water's look obviously it's quite murky, quite dirty. I don't tend to use clean water. Uh, I tend to get a bit of water out of my reclaim bucket, which is down by the side of the wheel here, um, and add a little bit of clean water to it. But yeah, it's it it's a bit more lubricity in 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 the water. Then also it gets some of the water out of my reclaim bucket. So then I come to do the reclaim. I've not got to dry the clay out quite so much. Right, so now I've got a nice, nice edge to uh, to drink from, basically. So, right, just finally two more snaps. Level that base with this wooden tool. Swarf that comes off. There we go. I, I'm reasonably happy with that. I think. Um, so clean up some of these lines. Put the sponge on it. There we go. Right, he's quite a voluptuous mug. This one, I quite like this, but. Uh, I'm going to try and throw a match in one in a second. So, um, the thing I do use this thing for, as well as obviously for throwing with, because it's got a nice fine point on the on the end of it, um, it's pretty handy for sticking under.